So to do that, I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and uh, take apart each individual cylinder here. Uh, we'll start off by taking off the uh, rocker covers, which is a pretty simple task and I've already been in these, so they should be all loose and uh, be no big deal. But, uh, so cylinder one we've got there, so cylinder one, we've got this exhaust side issue. Rockers, you know, we've got stuff. Probably also going to start in the details out, but I've got some cap holders, uh, push rods, also stuff, you know, kind of issue, but uh, So anyways, you can see here's the uh, rocker arms, and you see the action, just like a four-stroke should. Really, really neat. So these rocker arms, how they're held in, they're held in with these little uh, flathead pins uh, right there in the center. And let me tell you right now, those pins can be really tough. I've had instances where you really needed you really need to make sure you have the proper fitting screwdriver uh, because it is so easy to waller those heads out. So yes, it is extremely important that you get a proper fitting screwdriver, and this just happens to be the one that fits my <laughs> really good. So, and being said, you know, this engine, it shows signs of never being taken apart. These pins have a very good chance of being tough to get out, although this one is turning just fine, so that's good. But once again, just like the screws, if they are being hard to pull out, you know, hit them with heat and oil, and they should make it a lot easier. But anyway, this was the intake pin for cylinder number one, so we will set it there on that side. And then we'll go to the exhaust. Let's see how easy it is, and this one's turning out just fine. But yeah, find the screwdriver. The uh, best screwdriver you have that has the least amount of play that or just that fits the best because it's going to give you the best chance for loosening these so that's the exhaust pin. And then these rocker arms should come right off. So exhaust rocker arm. Good, nice and fine. There's the mark where it's been hitting the valve, which is fine, but or which is what you come to expect. But it's the exhaust, it's the intake. I'll go ahead and uh, get out the push rods here. That, I don't know, should they usually just fall right out, but okay, yeah, this one is. This is the exhaust push rod here, so we'll go ahead and put that in the exhaust. <coughs> intake, if it wants to, feels like coming out, although it's having a hard time. <laughs> there we go. And we have intake push rod there. So, now I think the next thing is going to be the fun part, and that is uh, taking the cylinder head off. And this uh, cylinder head bolt, especially for these Sato engines or these glows, you have to have an L screw because, as you can see, it's only chamfered the cylinder head. Or, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's got a chamfer there for the L. Okay, yeah. But luckily it looks like, well, yeah, obviously you can get one past there, but uh, this obviously fits. So we'll see how easy these are to turn out. Um, I've actually had pretty good experience with cylinder head bolts. And that one, I don't know, it did not snap and it's already coming loose. So first one that where we haven't had a snapping fastener which is uh, it's not to say this engine hasn't been taken apart but okay we have got the uh, cylinder head bolts off so let's see if we can pull this thing out um it helps a little bit if you depress the valve uh so i don't know it has something to do with suction i think but it helps get the cylinder off the piston so this is piston number one and you know it's got a nice caramel color on it um 
And, you know, if this engine has never been taken apart, which I very seriously doubt it has, um, I think it's a pretty nice low runtime engine so far. We'll see what happens when we take uh, the rest of the cylinders off. Um, but, I mean, this looks like, let me grab a paper towel and see here. Yeah, that's uh, wiping right off, so... Yeah, shouldn't be too hard to clean up, uh, and I am going to uh, clean this engine up thoroughly uh, too before I put it together. You know, if I'm taking the bearings apart, I might as well go ahead and clean the darn thing and get it in tip-top shape. So, anyway, uh, very cool. That came off without any issues. Here's a look at the cylinder head. Um, here's uh, a look inside the cylinder. And as you see, yeah normal uh build up the exhaust if i can get the angle right like there's the exhaust valve it's got a little bit of carbon on it and then this intake uh and this could be hard to see there we go is still pretty shiny actually so the valves are looking good uh the springs feel nice and pliable you know as they should be so very, very nice. So anyway, we'll take the push rods out now. This is the intake, push rod tube, exhaust. Go ahead and put them in their respective parts bins. Obviously, this is cylinder number one. So I will most likely take the valves out, but I won't do that in this video. Um, just because um, I'll, I mean, I'll record that separately, but it's not something I feel like doing right now. So I'll just set that in the number one. But yeah. Super cool, and then, you know what, we might as well take this piston out, because it's, the piston pin is wanting to slide right out. Looky there. And there's the, uh, trademark, uh, Sato Teflon pin retainers. But yeah, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of these heads off, and, uh, the uh, other two heads off, and I will report back, so. See what happens. Alright, so I'm just about to pull off cylinder number two here. Already removed all the other stuff, so anyway. And uh, it looks very nice as well. Uh, again, just a nice caramel color uh, ring. It's nice and free. Uh, we will check the valves again down here, and they look pretty much exactly the same as number one. And actually, the exhaust valve on this guy seems pretty darn clean. Compared to darn flashlights, I got a cheap one. one of those cheap ones that don't work very well. I know it's hard to see, but oh, there's the uh, intake, and uh, yeah, it looks good. And then here's the exhaust, and as you see, compared to number one, uh, not much carbon buildup on it at all. There we go. There's a good view. So the one on the, I'm looking at the camera now, and the one on the right is the exhaust. So yeah. Pretty clean looking valves. All right, so I just loosened up cylinder number three here and we're gonna take it out and see what this piston looks like. Let's see, this is the intake and this is the exhaust. These are the push rods. And to be honest with you, same exact story as number one and number two. So, yeah, I personally believe that, don't think that this engine has a whole lot of runtime on it. I mean, it's just starting to get the caramel color. Maybe at most a gallon, maybe, of fuel through it. Uh, let's take a look at the valves in number three here. And they look very clean. Huh. See in there, there's the uh, exhaust, I believe. Yep. Uh, exhaust on the left and intake on the right and beautiful looking valve so yeah i really don't think this engine has much runtime at all so uh very satisfied with that you know it's always nice when you uh, buy a used engine and it actually turns out to be a nice low uh, runtime engine now we get to look at this beautiful <laughs> connecting rod setup um Let's see, the master rod is cylinder number one. Uh, this is number three, and this is number two. Now, 
Uh, I am looking at these connecting rods here. And to reference how to make sure I put this in the right way, which actually, you know what? I can't do that because this connecting rod only goes in one way. So, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing out of here without having to take off one of these, uh, one of these out. There we go. Just like that. <laughs> so pretty easy. And then here's the uh, crankshaft, the massive counterweight, man. I've been taking apart a lot of four stroke engines before, and that is by far the largest <laughs> counterweight on the crankshaft. Uh, I have seen <laughs> ever seen before so uh very neat so there we got the crankcase and uh yeah listen to that bearings should not be making that noise so bearings definitely need to be changed but look at this beautiful little piece of work oh man this stuff is so neat uh if you do take the con rods apart uh there are these little dots right here i don't know if you can see those uh, on the bottom there's uh, the dot for number one right there, or the master rod. Uh, then yeah, you can see the dots. That in the, that notes towards the prop um, on all these four-stroke engines. So, and there's also a bevel on the inside of this. So as long as I don't take this apart, you know, I won't be able to, or I won't mix up the uh, uh, connecting rods or con rods. So very very cool so next thing is going to be taking off the uh timing covers and then we will take a look in there but the rubber boots by the way are nice and pliable on all these so i do not think these will have need to be replaced so that's good but anyway yeah let's uh dive into uh timing cover number one for cylinder number one which is up here so uh this again is 2.5 We'll see if these give me much headache. No, they don't. And they made a nice snapping sound, just like the motor mount bolts did. So, yeah. Many of these before. And I don't doubt this one being any different, but... There is a dot right here. I don't know if you can see. Yep, right there. You see the dot on the bottom of that cam gear? Uh, that denotes uh, how to time this engine, which when we go to assemble this thing, uh, I'll go into further uh, notes on how to time this. But um, is there a gasket on here? Yes, there is. And I... Unless it's really loose, I usually don't like to peel them off, you know, try to preserve them. But this one looks like it's coming right off and looks like the gasket is in great shape. So we will be able to reuse this. So this is for cylinder number one. So we'll go ahead and put this all in the uh, one egg carton. And yeah, we will go ahead and pull off the rest of the cam gear covers and... Uh, continue on from there.